lately I've fallen down the YouTube rabbit hole of bass fishing videos. And I came across this guy, uh, Retro Bassin, uh, Chris Bowman, and I uh, really liked his videos. Just, you know, sat one Saturday afternoon and just ended up going through a dozen or so. One of his videos, he's checking out uh, an old bait shop, uh, Gary's Baits. Gary's, he ends up talking about a guy, Gary's Jigs, um, where there's cards of jigs on the wall. A couple um, local places around here that are now long gone, um, but it was like walking into a time capsule. So love those types of stores. So getting back to why we're doing this. So I sent Chris a message and we kind of um, started messaging back and forth. And his idea was maybe I can do a video uh, tying up some of these old style uh, bass jigs uh, with natural hair. Which I'm going to tie up some jigs. I'm going to send them to him. Um, see if he likes them or not. And uh, he might uh, do some fishing with them and, and uh, catch a bass or two. I did go through all my molds and I was able to find a couple old do-it molds and uh, an old hilts mold that are going to be perfect. This video is going to be uh, specifically just how to tie hair on some of these old style heads. Uh, it's a little bit more in, uh, tricky, a little bit different technique involved because unlike my regular hair jigs where I'm tying directly under the shank of the hook, uh, the bass heads of course have, have a lead collar, usually with the, the collar shaped so it, the hairs flare and or um, the collar shaped so it also includes um, the uh, point to hold on a rubber tail. For this video, we're going to go step by step and I'm going to show how to tie an old school style bucktail bass jig. Stay tuned. So we're going to start today with the uh, using an Arky style head. This is just from a duet mold. Uh, there is a hole for the final step where we'll add a weed guard. And the size of these hooks are going to push the limits of my vise, but I think we'll be okay. I'm This first pattern I'm copying is a uh, hair jig that I found in my collection uh, is purchased by my father when he uh, when he would go to different bait shops. I do the same thing. If I see something that catches my eye, I'll buy it and uh, just throw it in a drawer, kind of just for a, a a way to go in and you know look at different patterns and and techniques and whatnot. But very similar. This is an Arky style head. It's got real long. Just a plain brown bucktail. It's black head, black weed guard with black thread. Uh, the thread that they used for this, it looks like a little bit bigger than a size A. I'm going to be using a size A thread today. This, this almost looks like they lashed it on with a rope. But uh, we're going to do our best and uh, just copy that. As you can see by the label here, it's, it's a target label. And the target in my area was just recently built. So I'm guessing that my father probably picked this up somewhere around Syracuse or Rochester area here in New York. Most likely, I don't know how old target stores are, um, but I'm guessing late 80s, early 90s. So we're going to begin with our size A thread, and this is just regular good rod, size A rod thread, and I'm going to lock the thread on right behind, right behind the part of the collar that would be uh, for the trailer. So if I wanted to add a rubber trailer. 
So we're going to leave this plain and just add the hair on the front. I got a nice brown tail. This this hair isn't terribly long, but the measurement we're going to do is from the head to the bend of the hook. That body length past the bend of the hook is what we're looking at. So roughly just to the edge of the silver part on my vise. So in choosing the size for your pinch, I like to do a little bit more than a quarter, roughly a third, a third, a third, and a third. And just like normal, I take my pinch and then I will restack the tips that are a little bit longer. Just placing them back in my pinch. And if there's any tips that just you don't like, just pull them right out and throw them in the garbage. Okay, so now I'm going to measure from the base of the jig head to the end of this silver part on my vise. Make sure that all the short hairs and broken pieces are out. Measure. And I keep changing my pinch. I can I can change my grip as much as I need to to move my fingers back and forth to make it so it extends just right to where I want it. So what's going to be helpful in tying these bass jigs is a vise that will rotate. So what we will do is we have about a third of a pinch, what we would normally want to see on this jig. Again, we'll make sure that it's the length we want. I switch my grip and I keep this pinch tight throughout the whole process. I don't loosen up my grip on this hair and I can Turn the jig so it's facing me. The, um, what we're going to do is this dark, if this was a two color jig we would start with a darker color and we would place it about the nine o'clock position on the shaft of the hook on the collar of the jig and once we lock it on and then we're going to manipulate the hair just a little bit to move it around the shaft of the hook. So we're going to put it on at the nine o'clock position and push it to the six o'clock position. Lock it on just like normal. So that's seven wraps. It's tight enough to create a V shape where the thread attaches and then you can take your thumb and your thumbnail and just push just push straight down and then kind of roll in the direction you want that hair to go. And as we can see, it's already at the, it's already rolled to the six o'clock position. And it looks fairly even all around, just fine. I'm going to add two wraps just for fun. I just need to adjust this. This hook is pushing the limits of my vise. So I want to make sure it's locked in there well. Okay. Now we can turn it so we can look at the three o'clock position of the shaft of the hook. Again, I'm going to take my pinch. Pull out the ends and we're going to restack like before. And since we're using the end of the silver part of the jaws of the vise is our measuring distance, it makes it fairly easy because now the jig is kind of out of position 
but I still know if I hold it up to the base of the head I'm just going to make sure that those hairs extend to my measuring point and will always be the same distance. They'll always be the same length. So we'll snip again right along the ends of my fingers keeping this left hand pinch tight, very tight. it on and again I'm just pushing straight down with it pushing straight down and then just rolling my finger my thumb or my finger in the direction I want it to go so now we have both sides they've come to a they've met at the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock position and now you can go back and I'm going to walk the thread back to the towards the bend of the hook just to the edge of my last wrap and then I can walk it back towards the head of the jig with touching wraps and I'm going to let go normally I would just completely finish this but just to just to point this out the object here is not to have a great big wide collar. This is about as wide as I want to go. This is a fairly big jig. I believe this is a half ounce. Um, I think I did half ounce, quarters, three eighths. I might have a couple eighths here as well. But this is a half ounce head. And as you can see, the shape of the lead collar is, is letting that hair flare out beautifully it's this is a nice tail but I don't need that collar to be so big and gaudy um, so what we've done is we try to keep it fairly compact it's not more than it's not more than an eighth of an inch maybe just a little bit more but but it's close to an eighth of an inch and I can add a couple more wraps just to make sure that it's a nice clean looking collar and to finish this off, I take a thread of an opposite color, and I like to use this bright neon color. bought it by accident, but it works perfect for doing this whip finish. I cut a piece that's 18 inches or so. I form a loop in it so I can place the loop under my last wrap and bring it on top of the jig where I can let it go. See, And then I can finish off whip finish this off just like you're you're adding a an eye to a fishing rod so I make touching wraps back to the center of this collar and then touching wraps all the way back to the head and I can do this once or twice if I wanted maybe go back a quarter of the way and then back to the head where the object is just to make this slightly cone shape I did switch hands with my thread. I'm holding the thread with my left hand so the tension between my hand and the jig head is still tight. I can take my barber scissors, cut my tag end, Just put it through the loop, keep the thread nice and tight, and pull it through. Trim your tag end. That is a beautiful jig. Now the hairs will compress slightly um, once you fish with it two or three times, but because of the shape of this collar, will maintain this flare beautifully. And there's enough space in the for this hook bend to add a trailer which I think we might do before we finish today I might I might uh, go through my tackle box and we'll find some trailers so I'm gonna add the hook back to the vise loosen it up again just so I can spin it and I'm gonna take a lacquer based head cement this is just a straight lacquer thinned with uh, mech 
but you could also use spar varnish or any of the commercial uh, type head cements. I would recommend against anything like a super glue or a zappa gap. Uh, it's been my experience that the super glue it penetrates the threads beautifully but it also causes the threads to be brittle. So if you get here in New York State, you know, if, if you get a pick roll or, or a larger pike hitting your jig and those teeth compress that collar, um, it, it tends to crack and snap. So that's why I stay away from things like super glue. So that's a beautiful jig. Here's my sample. Okay, our hair is a little bit more refined and measured, but it will flow nicely. So we'll set this aside to dry. Let's tie another one. This time we have another Arky head. This is a uh, quarter ounce. And this is, this is a little bit different, the style, compared to the Do-It. As you can see, the Do-It head has the extra collar so you can include rubber tails and, and uh, rubber grayfish uh, trailers but this is from a Hiltz mold which is from sometime around mid 80s I believe is when we purchased it um, from my collection and this Arky style head has the collar which will allow that hair to flare we just won't have the extra collar barb to hold on any rubber tails. So we lock this on just like before. Go back to our brown tail. And again, because we're tying on to a lead collar, we're going to use the rotation abilities of our vise so we can get a comfortable angle to add this hair. I suspect this to be fairly easy, so I'm going to go with a pinch that would be, you know, exactly 50%. What I would what I would guess to be 50% of the hair that I want on here. So again, we're going to measure. The, the we're going to extend past the bend of the hook the size of the body. So again, the way this hook is placed in the vise, it's going to be the end of the silver part on our vise. And I can switch pinches and switch grips until I get that length that I want. I'm going to pull out a couple of these short hairs. You don't need to save all of them. I just toss Every once in a while, I'll pull one out and throw it in the trash. So that looks good. I'm going to pinch tight. Trim along the tips of my fingers. Keep this pinch tight throughout the whole process. Again, I'm going to turn so I can look at the 9 o'clock position. So that was 7 wraps. But I, to lock this on, two or three wraps towards the bend of the hook, two or three wraps back towards the head, at minimum, to lock that on. And again, just push it straight into the center of the shaft of the hook, and the hairs will roll into place. So I'm not, I'm not really trying to twist it at all. I'm just pushing it straight down and just gently adding some pressure in the direction I want it to go. It's towards the bend of the hook and then three wraps back to the side that's closest to the head of the jig. And I'm just looking before I press it. And I'm going to press just a little bit towards the top and then I'm going to push the rest of it towards the bottom closing the gap on the bottom. See? Now top and bottom nice and covered. And I'm just holding this hair tight with my left hand also keeping the jig from rocking. These jigs 
the hook sizes are a little bit thick and though this vise does hold them pretty well I try to keep the rocking as you're wrapping the thread to a minimum just so they don't rock loose so again touching wraps to fill that in and now I'm going to walk the thread towards the bend of the hook and I'm going to add my loop for the whip finish and I'm going to walk my thread back towards the center of the collar touching wraps so right there the my loop for the whip finish actually broke underneath the wrap so I was able to pull the tag end out with no issue. And again this Arky style head does have the hole for the um, the weed guard which we'll add once everything's dry. Now we'll do a PBJ pattern and I'm using a one half football head again with the lead collar that has the barb for a rubber trailer so again size A thread lock that on like normal now this is a two color jig we're going to use our brown tail and I have a blue violet. It's a purple but uh, compared to regular purple it's blue. <laughs> so blue violet though is the color I really like uh, for my PBJ. The first thing we're going to do is concentrate on the color that will be on the top of the jig which in this case is going to be the brown. So just like before, I loosen my vise so I can turn it and get, I'm kind of looking at the four o'clock position at this point. And when I add my hair, I'm only pushing it towards the top of the, what will be the top of the jig. So I place the hair on at the four o'clock position. And I'm gonna push straight down and let it roll towards the top of the hook. Okay, I can turn to the other side and now I'm looking at the seven o'clock position. Keep this left hand pinch tight. With seven wraps so seven to eight wraps to lock it on and again pushing down and I'm just pushing it so it meets up on the top of this jig since now I have the bottom of the jig facing me and I have complete access to it I can take my pinch which is 50% And we can lay this right on in the center at the 12 o'clock position. Lock it on as normal. Three or four wraps towards the bend of the hook. Three or four wraps back towards the head. And as you can see how it's how it's laying on there right now, right? So it's not quite, it's not even, it's not spread out. And again, we can push straight down and kind of roll our finger, roll our thumb as we push it straight down a little bit left, a little bit right until it's spread out evenly and matches the brown. I'm going to just put a couple snug wraps on this but I'm not going to finish this collar yet. We're going to make this a little fancy and what I'm going to add here is 
this is a crystal flash it's number 15 and I don't recall the actual name to it it is it's a black crystal flash um, it's really kind of neat so there you have it. you have these black fibers and you and you have the um, the light just shining through the way it's the way it's twisted and this will look really good and I take four strands and I snip off four strands that are a little bit just like cutting a pinch from your tail I have four strands I lick the fibers just like you're gonna thread a needle cut the tip off just so I know that those are aligned equally I lay it in place and I lock it on with three or four wraps right down that center line before I let them go I can put my scissors underneath and just give them a snip just a little bit shy of the short compared to the fibers of the hair can roll my jig to the other side so now what I'm at, yeah, at the nine o'clock again I'm taking four fibers about the just like taking a pinch from the tail can wet the fibers give the ends a snip to make sure that they're equal and I and I push those four pieces of crystal flash right up against the head of the jig so they they stop shaking in my hand and then I can wrap put the thread wrap around it and then to finish this off just like normal so we're gonna walk the thread and do touching wraps all the way up to the head and in this instance because we added the crystal flash I'll do some I'll do one wrap past towards the bend of the hook on the collar and then back to the head and just to finish off the shape of this collar I did walk the thread back to the center and then back to the head before I let it go again I take my loop I put it underneath my last wrap and again with touching wraps well again with wraps back to the towards the bend of the hook stopping about halfway and then touching wraps back up to the head I can switch grips and cut my tag end pull this through and trim the tag end this is a good looking jig another jig that will look and work fantastic with you know a crayfish type trailer so the other option is to add uh, a purple crystal flash looks okay as well or a pearl I'm gonna put this back in the vise so we can finish the collar with head cement I think this is looking a little long these four strands right here so I'm just gonna gingerly try not to get any hairs and just give them a little trim All right, that looks a little bit better to me and again with our lacquer based head cement so I'm gonna tie up a few more of these these are gonna work great I'm really looking forward to it hope this helps if you have any questions on what we did here today tools techniques uh, add that down in the comments if you enjoyed what what we did here today hit that like button and subscribe so one pattern I wanted to tie for Chris Bowman at Retro Bassin was a pattern that works really well for me uh, we call it a sandpike and it's a two color jig that's striped to look like a lot of the types of minnows that are found here in central New York
often I tie this uh, as a three color pattern. I, I use a darker brown and then a lighter natural brown in the center. But what we're doing here today is just taking a natural brown and then we're going to add just the natural white and stripe it. It'll be, it's a beautiful jig. It works wonderfully. Locking this on with seven or eight reps. We're going to push straight into the shank of the hook, pinch tight. There's eight wraps to lock it into place. Again, pinch and just roll, let your let those hairs roll. We go back to the same tail and I'm going to take a pinch of white press this into place Finish it. To finish this sandpike pattern, I like to use a permanent marker. My favorites right now are the Milwaukee Ink Sol, but uh, a Sharpie uh, Super Permanent or regular permanent marker, or the Sharpie uh, Pro is also very good. pen to use and I hold the hairs together so I can stripe up one side four stripes and then four stripes on this side that sandpike pattern works great love using it for small mouth it's a good looking jig so at a great time casting and tying up those bass jigs. This video was specifically just to show uh, some of the techniques and uh, ways to go about putting hair on a bass jig. Uh, I had a great time looking at some old photos and videos um, sent to me by Chris Moldman from Retro Bassing. Also going through my old inventory and finding those old target jigs uh, and then tying them up. Uh, some that we copied specifically just tried to make an exact copy and then there were a few that we tried to put our own twist to make a make a little bit nicer jig so I did tie up a bunch more uh, different patterns I'm gonna send them down to Chris Bowman at Retro Bassing hopefully he enjoys the package if we're lucky he'll give us a video with him fishing with them so until next time keep your lead fluxed and tight lines <laughs>